If you have periods, there's a 75% chance that at some point you also experience symptoms of PMS. While everybody is different, the most commonly reported symptoms are cramping, back pain, bloating, breast tenderness, fatigue, and mood changes. In this video, I'm reviewing some science-based paths to a more pleasant period. From having less pain and more energy to reducing bloat, breast tenderness, and mood changes, you deserve to have all the information in this video. Thank you to the kind sponsor of today's video, Copilot. We'll hear more about them in a minute. As always, I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor. I can't give you medical advice and the information contained in this video is meant to be used for educational purposes only. The first path to a more pleasant period is helping you have more energy and less fatigue. Hormone shifts that occur around the time of menstruation can contribute to physical and mental fatigue. If this is severe, like it's interfering with your ability to live your daily life, or if it's persisting past the point of menstruation, it's definitely something you need to bring up with your doctor or healthcare provider. Otherwise, there's a few common sense things that we can incorporate that might make a difference. You wanna stay hydrated and stay active, but also I think it's really important to be listening to your body. If your body tells you that you need to slow down or do a little bit less during this time, that's okay. Give yourself a break, be kind to yourself, and listen to your body. You also want to make sure that you're getting a little bit more sleep and actually wouldn't even say you need more sleep than when you're not on your menstrual cycle, but that you want to be getting better sleep than you're currently getting on your menstrual cycle. So what can help with this? One thing you want to do is really lean into what we call sleep hygiene practices. That includes things like going to bed at a consistent time, making sure your sleep environment is comfortable for you, from the temperature to the bedding to the noises and the light, make sure all of that is really reduced to the lowest level that you find comfortable. You wanna make sure and avoid or at least significantly limit alcohol intake, which also causes more fragmented sleep and less time in deep sleep phases of sleep. And you wanna make sure and avoid caffeine for a prolonged period of time before you plan to go to bed. For most people, this is at least six hours. Some people even need a little bit more than that. Wanna make sure and avoid using your phone or computers for at least an hour before bedtime, those bright lights on your screens contribute to decreasing melatonin production because your brain thinks it is the sun. And we already know based on what I just talked to you about that melatonin production is less supported during the premenstrual and menstrual phase. So this becomes even more important during those times. There's actually some really interesting data as well on melatonin supplementation. And some people might benefit from a melatonin supplement about one to two hours prior to their planned bedtime. That's obviously not going to be right for everyone, but if you're struggling with this, it's something to keep in mind and maybe bring up with your doctor or healthcare provider if you have questions. The second path to a more pleasant period is helping you have less pain. Yeah! Yeah! Some discomfort in the premenstrual and menstrual phase can be really normal, but it shouldn't be severe and it definitely shouldn't interfere with your ability to live no, your no, daily no, life. No, no, no. So the things I'm talking about in this section specifically apply to people who have mild cramping that is annoying, but not interfering with life. If you have severe pain with your periods or pain that makes it difficult for you to just normally function like a human, that's something that needs to be brought up with your doctor or advanced practice provider. Let's talk a little bit about exercise. Endorphins are hormones that circulate in your body and they activate the same receptors as an opiate receptor. So they have a bit of an analgesic effect on your body, meaning they can provide some decrease in the amount of pain that you feel. In the premenstrual and menstrual phase, you have a decrease in the amount of circulating endorphins. Regular exercise not only increases the levels of circulating endorphins, but it also increases the production of some anti-inflammatory chemicals that your body naturally produces. Maintaining an exercise program consistently and specifically some kind of cardio exercise or aerobic exercise leading up to menstruation has been shown to be effective for reducing PMS symptoms, including cramps during menstruation. If you're anything like me though, and struggle with maintaining a consistent exercise routine, you might be interested in the free trial from today's video sponsor, Copilot. What if I told you there was an app that would help you be nine times more successful at sticking to your fitness goals? Copilot's not your average fitness app. They actually pair you with a real certified fitness coach. My coach's name is Chris. You have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them to discuss your health status, your goals, experiences, and preferences, and then they design a personalized fitness plan just for you. I have long struggled to consistently stick to a fitness routine. I also really hate 
like video exercise classes. So I appreciate that the plan she created for me is separate exercises grouped together into routines that I do on specific days. I think that's what makes this app so unique and effective. You have a real person who you know that can provide feedback and change your plans and give you encouragement and who is available to answer questions when they We're come too up. too high with those curls with all three sets. Let's go down and The wait. flexibility of being able to use the Copella app anywhere, whether I'm at home or in the gym or even in my office at the hospital on a 24 hour call has really been the key factor in allowing me to stick to a more consistent routine of moving my body and working on getting stronger. And with over 75% of Copilot clients continuing to work out after 100 days, Copilot is the best way for you to stay committed to your fitness journey and goals. So if you'd like to try out Copilot and support my channel in the process, you can get a free trial with your own certified fitness coach by clicking on my link in the description box down below or going to the URL or QR code on screen. Now, let's get back to the video. Period cramps are primarily related to production of prostaglandins. This is a type of hormone, actually there's many types of prostaglandins, but they are hormones that your body produces which play a role in contraction of the uterus. So yes, the uterus is a muscle, and yes, contractions like you would have during labor and birth happen during the menstrual cycle as well. When that happens, the uterus contracts down and it contracts around obviously all of the blood vessels that are in it. And those blood vessels temporarily for a moment in time are not able to provide enough blood flow to the uterus because it's kind of cutting off its own blood supply. This causes a mild and transient, meaning it goes away pretty quickly, ischemia or lack of blood flow, lack of oxygen to the muscle, which is what causes the pain. So what can we do to reduce pain during the menstrual cycle? If you're a smoker, you should consider quitting and not just for this reason, but in addition to all the reasons we all know, tobacco use and cigarette smoking is associated with having a higher chance of painful periods. So if you're doing that, it might be one more thing that you can file away as a reason that you should quit. Using heat can be really helpful. Heat packs applied to the lower pelvis have been shown in some studies to actually be more effective than Tylenol or acetaminophen at reducing period cramps. You can use that in the form of a hot water bottle or a wheat pack, a clay pack, all kinds of things exist. I might be working on something forever project that is relevant to this. Someday I will be able to share with you. And you can use those to help reduce your pain. Obviously you can't use them all the time though because you're not going to be at home laying in bed all the time where you can have heat on your pelvis. So we can talk a little bit about over-the-counter medications or medications that you would get at a drugstore. Usually the top recommendation if you're going to take an over-the-counter medication is going to be ibuprofen, or another similar anti-inflammatory. So these are things like Advil. The reason that these tend to work better is because they are more anti-inflammatory and they work more against the prostaglandin production that we were talking about earlier. So ibuprofen, Advil, naproxen, these are going to rank above acetaminophen, Tylenol, things like that. TENS units can be helpful as well. TENS unit is a transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation i think is what it stands for and these are little packs that you can get that have pads on them that you apply and they kind of send an electrical pulse into your body it's not like a horrible pain or anything and you can set it to be just it feels odd it doesn't feel painful and there's a lot of theories as to what the process of making this help with pain could be, but it definitely has been shown in studies to potentially be helpful for some people. So that's something that you can look into as well. There are some other things that people talk about like progressive relaxation and physiotherapy, acupuncture, massage that are a little bit in the more alternative medicine sphere. These studies on them are not robust or really convincing, but for some people they do work. So I will, put a link below that includes some information about some of those, but for the most part, these haven't been shown to be better than placebo. The third path to a more pleasant period is to reduce mood symptoms. Hormonal shifts during the premenstrual and menstrual phases contribute to a bit of mood instability and an increase in how many mood symptoms that people report. This can be anything from irritability to feeling a bit down to just a little more anxiety. It can also be really severe. If it's severe, again, like all of these, if it's interfering with your day-to-day -day life, that's when you need to make sure you're talking with your healthcare provider about it. For people who also have an underlying mental health condition, 
they might experience more exacerbations during the PMS and menstrual phases as well. The number one thing I would say here is we need to be optimizing mental health outside of the time frame of PMS and menstruation. That includes all the things we know are helpful to mental health, which oftentimes are going to be pretty person to person dependent, but can include anything from keeping a regular exercise routine like we were just talking about, to journaling, to being on medications if that's indicated and consistently taking your meds as they're prescribed if they have been prescribed to you, disconnecting from the internet, making sure you're getting good sleep, which we talked about up in the first section. All of these things contribute to your overall mental health and having a bit more stability means that if you start here and the PMS and menstruation phase brings you down to here, at least you're not going from here to here. Aside from that, there's a supplement called Vitex Agnes or Chastberry, which does have a decently robust amount of science backing it to say that it might decrease PMS symptoms, including mood symptoms. This is all going to be linked below. And of course, I can't tell you to start a supplement. I don't even know you, but it is something I think not a lot of people know about and might be helpful to a lot of people. So I'll link the information below, bring it up with your doctor or healthcare provider if you think that that might be right for you. The fourth path to a more pleasant period is decreasing bloating. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of science on how to approach this one. So we have to talk about it a little bit more broadly in terms of what people subjectively feel like helps them. I think that avoiding really salty and really processed foods could be beneficial here. We know those are things that increase how much fluid you retain in general. Other things that may be helpful and I personally find helpful is wearing compression socks, particularly if I'm going to be standing for long periods of time. That actually helps me with both fatigue and feeling like I'm bloating or retaining fluid. Again, I don't have science to support that. This is just a recommendation, but I do think they're generally low risk interventions that you can try and see if they're helpful for you. Additionally, you guessed it, regular exercise may be beneficial for this as well. And I think we're seeing a theme in that exercise can help effectively improve almost every PMS symptom. And we do have data for that, which is all, of course, as always linked below. The fifth path to a more pleasant period is happier breasts. Breast pain during premenstrual and menstrual phases is a really common concern. This is called cyclic nostalgia. That means breast pain, which is nostalgia, that comes cyclically, meaning at certain times of your cycle. This is something that a lot of people experience and it is also related to the hormonal fluctuations that happen around that time. This is another one where there is a role for some supplements that has some science behind it. Chamomile extract has been studied for reducing cyclic nostalgia and a randomized control trial was actually shown to be more effective than placebo. In the trial, they used the liquid form and they dosed it with three times per day. I think it's liquid drops on the tongue and you have to use it, or at least in the study, it was shown to be effective when used throughout the whole cycle, not just during the times of PMS or menstruation. They had them do that for eight weeks and then reassessed and was a more than statistically significant likelihood that this had helped with the cyclic nostalgia. So again, while I can't tell you to start a supplement, it is something worth knowing about. I will link the study below and you can bring it up with your doctor or advanced practice provider if you think that's right for you. Some people find avoiding caffeine to be really helpful for reducing cyclic nostalgia, although the data on this is a bit mixed. We do know that breast pain can be associated with caffeine. It's just we don't know for sure how big the association is when people are experiencing it cyclically, but it's worth trying cutting out your caffeine and seeing if it helps. There's some data on things like evening primrose oil, gamma linoleic acid, and vitamin E, but most of the studies on these fail to show that they are any better than placebo. But I think if you are looking at this from a science standpoint, that the chamomile extract is the one that has the most data behind it that I can actually say, yeah, it probably would be beneficial in some people. All right, y'all, I hope that this helps you on your path to a more pleasant and positive period experience. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you. I talk about all things periods, pregnancy, and everything in between. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and thank you, thank you for checking out the wonderful sponsor of today's video, Copilot, who I am now obsessed with and have genuinely been using and loving for quite some time. I'll see you next Monday.